Hello everyone, Glenn James here. Welcome to my Millennial Money Express. There was a bit of chatter in the Facebook group about I've paid off my debt, now what? So I want to have a chat about this today. This will be a short little 10 minute powwow to really encourage you and congratulate you for paying off your debt. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to organize a longer in-depth episode about all of these things. But just to kind of uh, start, firstly, yes, congratulations, you're debt free. And for the purpose of this episode, I just want to talk about consumer debt. I don't want to talk about uh, your mortgage or your home or your investment property debt or your hex or help debt. So, let's park those debts aside. Uh, But we might talk to people who they might have just paid off their car. They might have just paid off their credit cards. They might have just paid off their afterpay account, their personal loans, all of that stuff, consumer debt. So, I've paid off my debt. What now? Well, I think the first and the most important thing to do is to make sure it stays that way. So, what do I mean by that? So, make that decision in your heart, in your soul, in your mind, whatever that is, that I am no longer going into consumer debt ever again. Uh, it was a struggle to get out of. It didn't bless me uh, and I just I just don't want to do that again. So, I'd really suggest that that's your first thing to make the decision no more. And a lot of you uh, would, would naturally make that decision about um, well, after all the hard work that has gone into getting you out of debt. So, let's cover off some boring things first. The first thing is I want you to set up an emergency fund. So, that is at least three months worth of expenses saved. And the people who went into the COVID crisis with an emergency fund, they fared better, okay? And I don't really mean as in they're better people or whatever, but there may have been less anxiety in their life if they did get laid off work and they had some cash savings. So, I think if you want to, again, it's boring to set up an emergency fund, but that should be, I would suggest, a number one priority to consider. Uh, You can Google Glenn James uh, Emergency Fund and there's a whole blog there. We might also put that in the show notes. Then I want you to say, okay, now I am completely debt free. I've got my emergency fund set up. And you can kind of do this stuff in tandem um, and that's setting up your personal insurances if you have not already. So, that's your income insurance, your death cover. Um, just again, we want to factor these costs into your ca- into your cash flow and budget so you have the foundation set up. And there'll be a link in the show notes uh, and it'll be an image that will take you to my website uh, and it's called uh, the Glenn James Sound Financial House. And I've put this together just to illustrate the foundations of the things that you need to do and maybe a suggested order. And part of the foundation is paying off debt and being cashed up, having a spending plan in place. So, you're really starting to hone in on the personal money management, on the personal money management. And then I would also encourage you to chat with a solicitor and get your wills and your estate plan set up. And what do I mean by that? I mean, uh, obviously, your will, but also... Uh, Is there somebody in your life, either uh, if you are single, your parents or your siblings or your partner to have a power of attorney over you? So, if you were unable to act, um, if you're in an accident and or if you're overseas, not that you can really do that at the moment, but just somebody who you can trust to have a power of attorney over you and we will be doing more episodes on uh, estate planning and will. So, again, you're out of debt. Congratulations. We just need to now continue a little bit longer to get rid of some of this boring but important stuff sorted in your life because then your foundation, your foundations are in place. So, I guess the amazing thing is uh, now you're out of debt, it is really all about you now. And the funny thing is, it was kind of all about you before when you were in debt because you were over-consuming. And again, I don't want you to get offended when we talk about consumer debt because I've been there, a lot of people have been there and got through that, Uh, but there can be many reasons that lead to you having consumer debt, but I categorically believe uh, most of us have just believed a lie that we need debt to consume stuff and that's just not the case. So, if you are trying to work your way out of debt, absolutely, there is no judgment, there is no condemnation, there is no criticism, but I want you to just be encouraged and learn through this process that it has not blessed you. So, again, it was all about you because you're overspent, maybe, and I don't know your personal situation. You might have had to take some personal debt if there was something weird that happened in your life, but again, we're here now, so I'll 
swing back to talking to the people that are now debt free. What do you need to do? So, we've got our basic stuff sorted. I want you to go on a bit of a mind journey about your goals, your values, and what future you might look like. Okay. So, you might ask, well, what do you mean about values? Well, I think you need to really start thinking, what do you value in life? And that might mean I want a more comfortable life when I get to age 60, or I want a more comfortable life when I get to age 50. So, I've got the option to do less work. And that really speaks to, we need to start doing something to put some of the money that we have in our life uh, to be invested for the future. So, one of the things I want you to do is just really look at the values and, and just think about what do I want my life, my future life to look like? I want the future me to be looked after. So, we need to start uh, considering investing. And there's a couple of episodes that we've done recently on the My Millennial Money podcast around um, investing and some of the entry-level ways to get started. There are some more episodes coming or you can jump into the Facebook group. But the investing piece, it's it's one portion because once we um, we decide that we need to invest, it's then about choosing whether it's shares or saving up for a deposit to buy uh, an investment property. Now, when we talk about other values, some of that could be I value uh, paying off my mortgage because I just want to feel that I own my property and that's totally okay. I guess what I'm saying is because you're now debt-free, you possibly have an extra $200 a month, $500 a month, whatever that amount is, that is now not spoken for in your life because it was allocated to debt. So, if we look at, if we move away from the values and look at the goals, has there been something in your life that you've always wanted to do? Uh, I know pottery is really popular at the moment and I've just bought a whole heap of cool clay uh, from Ghost Ceramics on Instagram. You've got to look them up. Amazing. Um, but you might go, look, I've got some spare cash flow now. Can I now invest into me and start to do the things to make um, right now meaningful in my life? Yes, we want to allocate the money to the future, but we need to now go, well, I want to enjoy life or look at other goals. I want to start a business. Can we start saving money for a business? You might want to save up so when the restrictions lift in a year, 18 months to go on that world trip. There are as many options as you can think of, but I guess you always need to be doing three things. Give some, save some and spend some in that order. And I really think once you are debt free, you can really lean into those things. So, Again, on the give some, now that you're debt free, if there was $200 a month left over, can you look at maybe back into your values? I value this or this uh, charity or this purpose. I want to now financially contribute, okay? Because it's all about you because you've got the choices, but now you've got the choices, you can actually start to think, well, it's not all about me. Like I'm being really dramatic with all my words, but I hope you really are getting encouraged with what I'm talking about because I really want you to be uh, the best version of you and I think give some, save some, spend some. So, give some, we find a charity, save some, we look for future you. So, that could be uh, investing for the future into some shares, into some property. Uh, it could be considering superannuation to really uh, reduce your ongoing tax liability. That's also an option. So, you can speak to a financial advisor on the super or outside of super things. And we've got some more episodes coming up on that. But also, I want to just really encourage you, um, there are no rules when it comes to you and your money, okay? I, even though I say give some, save some, spend some, if you did not give a cent, well, I'm, that's your call. I'm just encouraging you uh, to consider other people. But there are really no rules when it comes to your money. And I think a lot of you who are debt-free are now possibly in the most exciting place that you've been in for many years. So, again, if you do nothing for the next two months and just dream and just think and get a journal and have a look at, oh, I wanted to, I want to do ceramics or I want to save for a holiday. And I will just add in there as a little bonus thought, 
If you've just spent the last three years paying off your car, can you set up another bank account and put an amount into that bank account each month? So, next time the car purchase comes around, you can sell your current car and then the cash from that sale and the cash that you've saved, you can buy another car and upgrade your car. So, just really start to think going forward, I've got spare money in my life. What do I do uh, going forward? And the answer is whatever you want, but just have some guides in place. So, give some, save some, spend some. And I want to really just say we'll continue this discussion later, but I wanted to jump on now and just really encourage you to just start thinking about future you and the you of now, okay? Um, Hey, I know I didn't really change the world with this little episode, but I really did want to just jump on and say there are a lot of people who uh, are in this position now and are working to get to this position. And it is, um, I think it's one foot well and truly in the financial freedom door or the financial freedom camp because you are not tied down by stuff that you have consumed yesterday, today. I always used to think if you are using credit or personal loans, you are spending tomorrow's prosperity today. So, we just can't get stuck in that and yeah, make the decision, no more debt. How can you invest for the future? How can you look at what you value? How can you look at some short-term goals and also celebrate? Like if you just finished paying $500 a month on a car payment and it's paid off, maybe next month, take that $500, take your friends, take a partner, go out and celebrate. Like you can actually do whatever you want and celebrate this moment and draw a line in the sand and say, I'm never doing debt again. And now, I'm doing what I want and if you don't like what I'm doing, well, that's cool because this is my money. You've got your money and we can still be friends. Hey, thanks for having a listen to me have a yarn today. I'm Glenn James. I'll see you guys soon. Bye. Bye.